There is a principle that I know is true, and I think you all believe it in your hearts, and that is that power corrupts. And that absolute power corrupts absolutely. Can you trust a corrupt system? What are you thinking about? Well, I'm thinking people are foolish if you believe you can go onto the internet, sign on to a social media site, and expect to have privacy. That's ridiculous. Please, nothing is free. What you are paying is your privacy. Authorities in Spain say they suspect John McAfee killed himself. His death is under investigation. John McAfee, a murderous, paranoid schizophrenic who had alcohol and drug tendencies, or an antivirus tech millionaire who tried to guide us towards financial independence, well, that's for you to decide. The truth, in my opinion, runs in the latter half. 24th of August, 2022, Netflix released a movie, Running with the Devil, The Wild World of John McAfee. Movie that resembles a documentary but leaves you with more questions than answers. What it does well is to give you a decent amount of history and an overall feeling what was to be around a man at that time when he was a fugitive. Although I followed every tweet, every video and every appearance that this man did, I still managed to find out about his passing two weeks ago. John McAfee found dead today in a prison cell in Spain. For me it was impossible to believe. Honestly, I was beyond baffled. And do you know why? Because he said that he was going to be killed and suicide for him was never an option. In fact, in 2019, he created a cryptocurrency token that he dropped free for every Ethereum holder. Well, you had to sign a signature with MetaMask, but I digress. The token was called Whacked. He also tattooed its sticker symbol on his right hand and he posted a tweet with an eerie message. Getting subtle messages from US officials saying in effect, we are coming for you, McAfee. You are going to kill yourself. Uh, I got a tattoo today just in case if I suicide myself. I didn't. I was whacked. Check my right arm. At that time, I really had doubts. I thought that paranoia ran strong with this guy. Or maybe he did it for publicity. October 2020, McAfee was arrested in Spain. 9 p.m. 15th of October. He tweeted, I am content here. I have friends. The food is good. All is well. Know that if I hang myself a la Epstein, it will be no fault of mine. Yeah. 23rd of June 2021 marked an end of an era. It was the day John McAfee was found dead in his prison cell in Barcelona. He was found dead in a Spanish prison awaiting extradition to the US on a variety of charges, taxes and other things. He was also uh, accused ostensibly of murder. Uh, and, and notably said uh, that he would never uh, commit suicide, so that if he was found to have committed suicide, that actually it would be the government killed him. Death by hanging. At least that's what the coroner said. Supposedly a suicide. At least that's what the letter said found from his pocket. Convenient. Although countless of requests calling authorities to release his remains to his widowed wife, they are still being held by Spanish government. What makes this story weird is that McAfee wasn't suicidal, and it all may have been fabricated. John McAfee was not suicidal. I spoke with him a few hours before he was found dead. We spoke about the court's decision to extradite him to the US. It did not come as a surprise to either of us. We were prepared for that decision and had a plan of action already in place to appeal that decision. I blame the U.S. authorities for this tragedy. Because of these politically motivated charges against him, my husband is now dead. His last words to me were, I love you and I will call you in the evening. Those words are not words of someone who is suicidal. All John wanted to do was spend his remaining years fishing and drinking. He did not deserve to die in a filthy prison like a caged animal. But did John have a reason to be paranoid? Well, let's wind the clock back a bit. At school, he was a nerd who studied hard. He mostly got straight A's. But as he put it, smart people at that time got laid too. In 1967, he received a bachelor's degree in mathematics. He also started doctorate degree, but was expelled because he had a relationship uh, with an undergraduate student. Oops. And she later became his wife. John was employed by NASA. He also worked on Apollo program. He worked as a software designer in Univac. 
and operating system architect in Xerox, and later even Lockheed. One day he saw his brother-in-law read a news article about this new thing called computer virus, something that could replicate itself and destroy data. He started to think how would such a thing work, and by doing that he also figured out how to stop it. He wrote his famous antivirus software in one day, and in two weeks he had 5 million users. Some weeks later a new type of virus hit the internet. Jerusalem. So McAfee needed to upgrade his software. And that's where it all began. I see infections of small companies where every computer has become infected and the company is near collapse from financial loss. Virus expert John McAfee, president of a newly formed computer virus association, helps companies recover from attacks. He stepped down as a CEO in 1993 and sold his last shares in 1994. He had consistently made $5 million every year. His net worth at that time was over $100 million, which was a huge chunk of money. Intel acquired McAfee Antivirus in 2010 for $48 per share, paying in total of $7.8 billion. And what makes it funny is that, as McAfee put it, nowadays antivirus doesn't work anymore. Everything is done by social engineering or highly sophisticated hackers. It doesn't take much to take your data away. In fact, everyone does it willingly, every time you use your smartphone or log on to any social media platform. Everything you post on the internet stays there forever. Remember that. Uh, if you input your name and your address, um, your age, you better expect everybody in the world to have access to that. Whatever you put down on any media site, you must expect the entire world to see that. And McAfee started to advocate this in 2012. Tech giants somehow didn't like it. I don't know why. After all, most people pay top dollar for computer security. November 2012, McAfee got into really, really serious trouble. That software millionaire turned murder suspect. ABC's Matt Gutman is in Belize where he spoke with John McAfee by phone yesterday. In a bizarre phone conversation which began in downtown San Pedro, Belize, okay. McAfee told us he didn't murder his 52-year-old neighbor Greg Fall Saturday night. Police say he is a person of interest but have not called him a suspect or charged him. Despite that, McAfee says he's now in hiding, fearful of what he calls a corrupt government. Belize's prime minister publicly taunting McAfee Wednesday. It strikes me that he's extremely paranoid. In fact, I would go so far as to say bonkers. His neighbor, Gregory Fall, was murdered. And McAfee had a motive. McAfee was a dog lover. All of his dogs were running wild and parking in his beachfront garden in Belize. Gregory, on the other hand, wasn't too fond of the dogs. In fact, he threatened to poison them, which was exactly what happened 24 hours later. Officials say their barking and aggressive behavior was a frequent source of friction between McAfee and his neighbor Greg Fall, who lived here. Last Friday, McAfee told police someone poisoned four of his dogs, and to put them out of their misery, McAfee shot them. Two days later, somebody shot Greg Fall once. Gregory was killed by a single gunshot to the back of the head. Being a gun lover and heavily armed with dozens of ex-military personnel guarding his property, that didn't make matters any better. You see, the area around his house was, was a thorn in Belizean government's paw for a long time, scaring off the tourists, as Belizean officials put it. McAfee insisted that he was not well liked by the prime minister Bonkers. and they all wanted him dead. He also added that killing Gregory was a hit gone wrong and uh, he himself had been the real target. Despite being ordered to pay $25 million in wrongful death claim, McAfee was never actually charged with any crime in that country in connection with Fall's death. At the same time, being paranoid that the Belizean government wanted him dead, because he had refused to pay off government officials, who seemed to extort quite a lot of money from him. He also said that Belize authorities had accused him of running a meth lab in April 2011. Then, in April of 2012, McAfee was about to have trouble with the law for an entirely different reason. There was a belief that he was manufacturing illicit drugs on the compound, like as I said, because of all the different criminal elements that were there. It's very unusual that you'd be doing research into plants and you need so many people to protect you. Make them ready. Belize's gang suppression unit raided his lab. They say on suspicion he was making meth. No drugs were found. 
uh, and I moved into the backyard of the most powerful man in Belize. Um, after I'd been there for a year, a representative came and said, why don't you donate $2 million to my patron's campaign, and in return, we'll give you all this land and benefits and so on. And I said, uh, no. Uh, they raided my property two weeks later, came back two weeks after that, and said, have you changed your mind? And I said, yes, I'm pissed off now. And so I went to the international press, and that was in, in May of 2012. And for eight months, I ran an ongoing war with the Belizean government, demanding an apology at the very least, and, and getting the attention of the world government on the corruption and, and all the nightmares that was, were happening. Um, I barely knew Mr. Paul. It was a convenient thing for the Belizean government to try to pick me up for questioning, because in Belize, you may hold someone for questioning for 60 days with no charges, and you may renew that indefinitely. So I could have been 60 years waiting to be questioned. I chose not to go that route, and I went on the route. To put myself in their hands, uh, I think, is lunacy. I really do. Well, what I can expect is that the GSU will do what the GSU does, you know, beat me soundly uh, until I confess to a multitude of sins, uh, including, I guess, the murder of Jimmy Hoffa, and then, uh, then, then to simply execute me. The police want to talk to him in connection with their investigation. What on earth? can be wrong with that. On the last occasion, he had a run-in with the police when they raided his, his farm and he had made uh, some very um, derogatory remarks. I'm sure I responded to say that, um, no man, nobody's above the law. One day in time, McAfee even provided bulletproof vests and guns to Belizean police. But he also claimed that he had a lot of incriminating data about the highest officials in Belizean government. Corruption in the highest level. He had to escape, so he escaped to Guatemala, where he sadly was detained by Interpol. So he had to fake a heart attack to, to escape deportation to Belize. He lived most of his time on his boat, that he claimed to have bought from Jordan Belfort. But McAfee also had some new trouble brewing. He was publicly stating that he wasn't paying taxes and he was advocating for everyone else to do the same. In 2019, he hadn't paid a single tax in eight years. US government was now on his tail. His main explanation was that taxation is illegal. In my opinion, he was and still is right. First modern taxation was implemented in US to finance civil war in 1861 to 1865. A new income tax was introduced in 1894 to make up for lost revenues from reduction in US tariffs. Taxation is a slavery and it violates the 13th Amendment. Taxation is an unlawful seizure of property, which violates the 5th Amendment. So you take your pick. In 2017, McAfee started to advocate Bitcoin and financial independence. He warned us about your data being stolen, your actions being monitored, and your lives being controlled by the government. He insisted that cyber warfare was ongoing. He was on point, because our smartphones track our every move. They record us and manipulate us every day, whether it's being targeted advertisement or just data harvesting. This data is all bundled in somewhere to record our behavior. Many people don't realize this, but your data is actually worth about $1,500 every month. As you walk around, you shop, you do whatever, you visit your favorite web pages and stuff. Everything you do on the internet is worth $1,500 for a person who tries to sell you something. $1,500 a month. If you have the option to sell the information that's being stolen from you 24-7. In 2018 and 2019, uh, John extensively promoted dozens and dozens of crypto projects, constantly tweeting about new shitcoins. May I add that he earned $100,000 per every tweet he made. So he made money quite handsomely, let's say that. But he also added fuel to the fire, because not only was he openly not paying taxes and undermining US government, he was now promoting scams, getting the full attention of IRS and SEC. He was on the run again, because he also ran for president under the Libertarian Party, basically just to make himself heard even more. He just needed a platform. Unfortunately, in October 2020, McAfee was caught in Barcelona's airport, and we are now back right where we started from. He claimed to have incriminating evidence against US high officials, dirty agents, money laundering, bribes, and so on over 31 terabytes of information. 
He promised to release all of this data when something happened to him. Was that a bluff or was it reality? He also stayed adamant that he would not kill himself. Sadly, we know the story and none of this data has reached public yet even a year after his alleged suicide. Did McAfee have enemies? <laughs> Absolutely, a lot of them. Was he paranoid? Probably. But as he explained, that kept him alert. Drug abuse most certainly enhanced his paranoia. Bath salts and stuff, did he have incriminating data? Yes, I'm sure he had. Even if he didn't use any of his programming or hacking skills, he most certainly had enough money and connections to basically obtain everything he needed. Maybe the data hasn't been released because he's alive or he struck a deal. But this brings me to the conclusion. Was he murdered or was it a suicide? Considering every statement from his wife, his personality, his history and other evidence, in my opinion, suicide was very unlikely. Now, since this alleged suicide happened only hours after the judge's ruling to extradite him to US, he might have had an escape plan. He was wealthy well connected, he had faked a heart attack before, and his body was not and is not still released, there's a slim chance that he managed to escape somehow. I really hope that he is alive, but I will surely miss his posts, I will surely miss his message to the world. And knowing what governments are capable of doing, nothing sadly surprises me. People in the world seem to be living in a bubble. Whether they're ignorant or they choose to dismiss whatever's surrounding them, they believe that shit only happens in movies. I'm sorry to burst your bubble, friend, but if you choose to step out from your guidelines set for you, your life will be made into a living hell. Today is September 2022. Julian Assange is still alive. For the sanity of you and me, I hope that he will not meet his maker via suicide in the future. Anyways, I'm Silly Lamas and thanks for watching. Till next time.